In the last few years, many organizations have implemented the model of Dave Ulrich for the HR organization. And, and most of you know how that works. So you have, you have the business line, the managers and the employees somewhere, and then you have the HR business partner. This is how we call them. And they are supposed to work with the executives on, on eye level to deal with all people-related things and they are pretty much generalists, though so they have much general knowledge and a little bit expertise, but they are more or less generalists. They have to deal with everything. And in, in the, to, to support those HR business partners, they are center of expertise. This is the second component. And there you have people who are very deep in one thing. So maybe in labor law or in employer branding or talent acquisition or executive education. So but the center of expertise supports the HR business partner. And then there is the HR service center, the shared service center. And they deal with all the uh, repetitive, uh, st standardized, administrative stuff. So here it's pretty much about um, efficiency, really. So, and um, this is a common model for, for, for many organizations. Now we feel that there's something wrong with that. So what's wrong with that? F point number one is the business line does not appear in that model. It just appears as the customer. And this model demonstrates that everything you do is a kind of service to the business. And the second point I see is that the center of expertise, they are very often in the headquarters, somewhere hidden, and they don't have instant access to the business. And that's a huge problem. And as a consequence, the, the center of expertise, the very often, I see this too often, uh, create concepts which are far too complicated and and far from reality and very often uh, don't, don't work. Um, they don't have the direct touch to, to those people who are affected by their ideas. And, and, and that's, a, that's a big issue. So here is the alternative. So two dimensions, technical complexity and social dynamic. Technical complexity, meaning there are in HR simple things everybody can do, really low complexity, and there are things who are incredibly complex. <laughs> um, what is complex, technically? It's, it's expatriation, for instance. Think of all these uh, 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 tax things and social security stuff, and, and so, uh, or think of implementing um, HR system. <laughs> these are technically complex things. On the other side, there are things in HR which lead to a high level of social dynamic, while other things are people don't realize. Yeah? What does that mean, social dynamic? Social dynamic means it's, it's, it's people fear, people show resistance. Uh, there are unpredictable effects, social effects. There might be competition, there might be rivalry, there might be politics. So every time when the future of people is, is, uh, is, is a matter, maybe, um, then social dynamic is extremely high. It's with every merger, for instance, or when you implement a new performance appraisal, or if you change your compensation policy, that very often leads to a lot of social dynamics. So here's the hypothesis. The more technically complex something is, the more experts you need. I mean, that's simple. For more complexity, you need experts. In HR, not everybody can do HR. For some things, you really need people who have a deep understanding about uh, the subject matter. The more something is related to social dynamic, the more you have to include the line, those who are affected. That's the second hypothesis. So, you should never Never ever create a concept just in the silence, in the headquarters, somewhere. When it comes to social dynamic, when you expect social dynamic, you have to work with those people who might be affected. So that leads to some roles. Here on the bottom left hand side, 
I would name this the HR factory. This is pretty much the uh, shared service center. Uh, the HR factory is in charge for all simple things with low social dynamic. That's easy. That's the HR factory. Payroll and all this stuff I don't have to explain you. Then for the complex things with low social dynamic, just have an HR network of experts. Have some experts ready, internal or external, does not matter. I would not name this a center of expertise. I would rather name it a network of experts. When things are really simple, but might lead to some social dynamic, put business line in charge, really. Let them do what they, what, they, what they need. And when it comes to both, when you have high social dynamic, much technical complexity, then you have uh, teams of both, people from the line and experts. And maybe in the middle you have, you have something like uh, HR curator, I would say. Maybe this is the future head of HR. Somebody who always knows, okay, this is this case, this is this case, here we have much social dynamic, this is technical complex, who is doing what, bringing people together. And finally, we have artificial intelligence. And that will step by step take over all those simple things that lead to less social dynamics. So I thought very long on this and that's my proposal. So if you ask me, how does an HR organization look like in the future? That's how I would see those things.